sponsor's 10-year tip with Gary Dibley. Well, good evening. It is a bank holiday Monday night. It is nine o'clock. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever-capable mod master that is Mark. Um, yeah, it's been a warm one today um, down here. It started off a bit cloudy, and as you can see from the face, um, yes, I did manage to catch five minutes of sun before my daughter decided to soak me. Um, the one moment of relaxation I got this weekend, and she decided to uh, to bring out the water pistol. Love the kid. Uh, but yes, I've been busy. I've, uh, uh, my wife, finally, after three years of, of living in our house, it might be more than that, I don't know, but she finally has a kitchen worktop. Um, and it's got towels around it so she, she's a happy bunny and uh, I don't have to go to work tomorrow so uh, I will be finishing off and wallpapering and stuff so been absolutely hectic uh, I slung something uh, no I didn't sling something together it was a bit more professional than that um, I rapidly put something together for, for tonight's show coming up tonight Mark is uh, is starting um, work on his Vamo mod um, I know we've been waiting for that one for quite a bit and he has some wood and his new tools. Um, <laughs> I'll, yeah, they're good. They're good um, and powerful and dangerous and good. Um, and uh, I enjoyed watching them the first time around. I'm going to enjoy watching them again. Um, I had a little play um, with the uh, with the lathe again. Um, I was messing around and thought, you know what? With nothing else better to film, I think I will film myself attempting. Um, and I will say attempting uh, to make a drip tip um, out of some uh, 316 stainless steel that I had um, lying around. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it went, um, but it was a damn good learning curve. Um, I learned a lot trying to do that, including I'm terrible at it. Um, but with practice, I'm sure it may well improve. What I'm going to do uh, very, very quickly, um, I had a, a couple of uh, a couple of uh, PMs on, on the forum asking me a couple of bits about uh, about what sort of um, tools we use for, for sort of cutting um, uh, this that, and the other within the Dremel. So I did a quick two minute video um, to show said person, um, and I'm sure Ratfinks will, will appreciate this as well because she um, is now in, uh, in receipt of all of the goods uh, to uh, to play challenge chat um, and we sent her across a couple of uh, a couple of mods a nice easy one to start with um, which is all the bits to make a, a standard um, box mod um, and then we've sent her a full kit for a uh, for a, a VV tin um, with display and this that and the other so really looking forward to that and I know she said to me she's she's got most of the tools en route I think bar the soldering iron she's waiting for so as soon as she gets there um, we will be uh, we will be featuring some some of uh, some of the clips from from her journey um, and she's watching I do believe some of our replays uh, to, to get to grips with it um, first time modder um, I'm sure it's going to be good um, and it will show hopefully uh, you guys out there that, that anybody can literally have a go if you've got the a, a right sort of tools um, and hopefully she'll show you what she's using um, let me pop into our first bit uh, and then we'll crack straight on with uh, with Mark and his uh, his family mod okay now I've been asked a couple of questions on the forum so I just want to cover this ever so slightly uh, before we go into looking at anything this week um, somebody said to me what is the easiest way uh, when you're cutting the plastic or metal now obviously a Dremel with a grinding disc um, now the best type of grinding disc that I find are these uh, now I believe Mr Kitson's had a look at them and I'm pretty sure these are the type that Mark uses as well this is a 38mm uh, speed disc and this is for, for cutting metal um, they are a, a really sturdy disc the, the ones that you, you get, um, I think the question was, that you, you do get the ones that are in the, if you like, the multi-cutting pack, uh, which are, if you like, non-dremel discs. They are okay, but I find that they grind down very, very, very quickly to, to almost nothing. These discs, I've whereas I would have probably gone through about 30 or 40 of, of the other discs, I've probably gone through, I bought a pack of 10 of these, and I've still got four left in four and a bit, and, and some small ones. Um, so the ratios are good. Price-wise, these are quite expensive, but they do work on the click, you know, the click system. So they can just rotate and and drop off, and and quite easy to to slap a new one on. 
The other question they, they poised as well is what other sort of tools do I do I use quite a bit on the Dremel? Um, I know we've covered this before, but uh, we will ask the question. Um, these are my routing bits. I've shown you before. These are really good on, on routing out um, wood. Um, do a really nice, quick job. The other thing I've been using a lot recently with, uh, with playing with metal are these sort of uh, disky wheels. So really, when it comes to the Dremel, it's it's you know few and far. You know, it's whatever you whatever you're working on. There's a damn tool for it. Um, and and these are the discs that I use. And as I say, they are damn good discs. I've I've used them quite a lot for a lot of applications. Plastic, metal, you name it, they will do it. So now I've covered that. Hopefully that has answered the question that was uh, that was posed in the chat um, or or to me via PM. And uh, there we go. Happy days. Thank you very much. Now we can get on with some modding. <laughs>
basically going to go something like that and an atomizer connector up here round about the right sort of length I want to be so all I need to do now is mark out a channel for where I want to cut so with a bit of masking tape I'm going to add basically a length here put that to the base, that will make enough room to get the magnets in on the base when I come to do it. And on the top, I think pretty much the same, it's going to be a full width of the tape. That's going to give me enough room, in fact it's going to be too much. Just the tape up a bit. And if my atomizer connector wouldn't run away, there. That's going to give me roughly the amount I need to leave for the atomizer connector and a space for a couple of magnets in there as well. So, what I need to do is cut a channel between the two marks of masking tape around about half an inch all the way down and sorry three quarters of an inch all the way down and that should give me what I need so now I just need to mark up the other bits exactly the same way and I need to cut a channel out of this one not all the way through like I showed in the video that you might have just seen working on a scrap and the same on this and this one which will be the middle piece I'll need to cut all the way through, so that'll be the last one I do, as I'll need to adjust the router between doing the other two bits. This section I'm planning on doing just for the battery holder, so I suppose I should mark this out separately. So that'll be the same on the bottom, but the lid part I only want to route out enough room to take out that. That way the lid will hold the board in place a bit. And protect it. So I think somewhere about there. That will be giving me enough cut out to get the battery in and minimise the depth. So, back when I've changed camera shots. Right, back for a, another week. Now, I did fully intend to uh, to make this this weekend, um, which is a little din, as you can see. Um, nicked it off my mother. Extra ice mints. Now, this, I think, will take a 14 pound 100 battery. I may well start this, I don't know. Um, I was going to was gonna film this, but I got sidetracked because I found a, uh, a big stainless steel bolt. Um, and... I know we've been playing in you know last week um, we played a bit more you can see lots more mess uh, and I need to tidy up now what I've been looking at playing with and we'll just get that right I've been uh, I've been playing with uh, with a drip tip um, or trying to because at this moment in time I just walked away I don't have a I don't have a clue what the tools do now I've, I've been looking been learning and, and oh, I would like to think I've been learning um, I had all my stuff come this morning um, as in little bottles of uh, cutting oil and stuff like that so I'm just going to turn it on see how we go um, I don't expect to have a drip tip by the end of this but just have a, a little play um, I may well uh, tomorrow um, ditch all of this and, and do something entirely different but uh, I'm just going to take up the speed on the day and I'm just going to add uh, a little bit of the cutting oil
sort of starting to get the I don't even know that it's in focus all that I'm starting to get the, the shape of, uh, of a mouthpiece I think I've already pre-drilled this um, so I'm gonna work away a little bit more and uh, and try and get this down uh, a little bit it's playing with the tools really I'm trying to get um, the mouthpiece end um, you know something like this which we're not far off I don't think um, I'm gonna pop away we'll stop that I'll have to polish this up afterwards um, you know this is rough cuts and apparently I didn't know you, you polish this stuff up afterwards but I'm trying to get a um, a mouth PC type end on uh, I'm not going to stick that in the gob now to test whether that, that suits me because it's just going to look like buggery um, and then I'm going to narrow it right down and then somewhere around about here I want it to be sort of stumpy I'm going to start taking it in uh, a little bit for the uh, for the insert that will go into into the Etty um, but I'm going to play a little bit more and I will pop back after this and there we go that was our, our first little uh I'll say proper play, um, but it's not proper play. I, I was playing, um, and it was mentioned in chat the, the the smoke coming off there. That is actually from the uh, from the cutting oil, and it absolutely stinks like buggery. Uh, I'm going to pop into our first little air break. I'll pop back, and uh, and we got some news and bits and pieces for you after this. Liberty Flight sponsors Ten Year Tip with Gary Dibley. once again um, obviously uh, if you guys have been watching some of the shows uh, I think the latest update of of the uh, of the Kickstarter campaign um, Dave said last night it was somewhere around about 14,000 and odd pounds I had a little check uh, before I come on tonight and and it's now standing at 15,050 pounds so uh, again great work everybody uh, keep it all coming in um, as I mentioned before we uh, I've put up the the stumpy mod that is actually currently for auction in in the um, in the tinny tip forum the vapor trails forum um, and I'm going to be adding something else a little bit later, uh, potentially tomorrow, um, to, to start a, another one. Uh, they will be ending round about the 20-something live on a show, and uh, and whoever's the highest bidder wins, effectively. Um, something that, that was, was asked, uh, talking about doing good things, um, somebody, I think it was Sav, uh, pointed me in the direction of uh, the the Facebook group um, Vapors Unite. Now, I did have to, to go in and I think you, you request permission to join the group, which was granted very, very, very quickly. Um, the reason for that, uh, she asked you know, if we could give a quick mention to uh, that they're actually putting together, at the moment I believe, a, a calendar for 2014. Now, what will be in that calendar? I don't have a clue. Um, I didn't get time to, to look into it in depth. But just a little plug for those, get yourselves over to 
to to the, the Vapors Unite group on uh, on Facebook. They've got this 2014 calendar which they're putting together and all the proceeds from the, the, the calendar will actually be going towards cancer research. So a good cause um, and uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it goes well for them. Um, one other thing I think we had to, to mention um, was was what we are putting up for auction. Um, now I've promised a couple of people these, um, which I will be making. Um, you know you are, Mr. Dorm. Uh, but I'm going to put up the the Atty Building Station that we made um, in the in for auction. So uh, if you fancy uh, having a bid on that, get over to the Vapor Trails forum, and all the money that, that is raised for there will go towards Kickstarter the the Swarf campaign. So that will be going up there. Excuse me, while he knocks everything frame a little bit later today. Um, I'm going to uh, to pop into our next little section now, and I'll see you back very shortly after this. And we are back in the room. Um, while I've been away, effectively, what I've done is I've I've cut this drip tip off the uh, off the bar that I was working on, um, which probably, in reflection, was a complete and utter mistake. Um, I am by no means no lathe expert as you can probably see um, but we do have what is starting to look like a drip tip um, taking shape. Uh, it, I'm getting used to the controls um, <laughs> and they are they're quite tricky so you know with the with the forwardy backy and backwardy forwardy things and all that sort of stuff and and my bed I now know it's called a bed um, but it's it's damn hard. I, I didn't realise it was going to be this difficult to sort of. I thought it would be a plug and play type thing, um, but far from it. And and I have much much more respect for the guys that now you know build all these atties and bits and pieces than I ever did before. Um, not that I didn't have respect for them, but it's just uh, incredibly difficult unless you know what you're doing. And I'm sure we'll get there one day. But what I've the position I've got to, I'm just trying to taper the edge of this, uh, which is easier said than done. So I'll, I'll go away. No, I'm not going to go away. I'll do it now. Uh, let me just fire this up. Safety's on. Add some of the uh, cutting on. Just start bringing in that bit ever so gently. Now I've got to be careful because I'm really close to the uh, to the tail stop or the chuck or whatever it's called. So there's sort of that end. Now what I'm going to have to do is change it all. Um, now I haven't got a clue because I, I, I want to hollow out or, or, or chamfer off this outside I suppose is the opposite cutting tool. Stupid boy. Um, now where did I put that? Let me just uh, take this tool out and we'll put the other one in. And we'll see where we go because I'm trying to get the other edge as well, uh, sort of chamfered in on the edge as, as they are. Um, I wasn't planning on doing this, but got a busy weekend, and I thought, well, while I'm, while I'm playing, I might as well film as well because um, I'm putting worktops in tomorrow. We had the IKEA experience today. Oh, God, do I love that! I think next time your wife says she'll go to Ikea. No, 
can't say what I would want to say because I'd probably get lynched. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. If my wife ever asks me again, I know what favours I'll be asking for. Right, let me uh, kick this up the other way. <laughs> using a real uh, it's much smoother, a real low sort of uh, speed on this now the other thing I'm probably going to do is try and twist my tool post around a little bit now I'm not sure how this is going to work out because what I want to do is try and take and that probably isn't going to work out I want to take a little bit off the middle now I'm not 100% sure how to do that um, I'm going to go away and have a look See what I can work out how to chamfer a little bit out of the middle. I know you could probably use a, a I'll tell you what, that's a good idea. Reaming tool, straight down the middle, job done. I'll be back in two. And so I've moved to the rotor table and I took the precaution of marking each piece of wood with an up. I mark on what the side I want to be facing up over because I don't want to mix them up. And I've also marked a couple of lines with masking tape here, you'll be able to see this very clearly, of the outer edges of where the blade are, so I know where I'm cutting is the right point. So I'm just going to line up this one with that and hold it over, and release the safety. And this is where it's going to get noisy again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gently push down on it, push it along that way so it bites into the wood and cuts out the channel hopefully. Let's see how we go. Now, hopefully, with a bit of jumping around, as you can see, yes, it has jumped around quite a bit. But I've got the channel I need to work with here, and I should have enough wood left over on this to get the connections in. So that's one down, and now for the second one. Hopefully it should be a bit easier. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off there and just let it 
drift in, I think. So I've moved to the router table and I took the precaution of marking each piece of wood with an up. I mark on what the side I want to be facing up over because I don't want to mix them up. And I've also marked a couple of lines with masking tape here, you'll be able to see this very clearly, of the outer edges of where the blade are so I know where I'm cutting is the right point. So I'm just going to line up this one with that and hold it over release the safety and this is where it's going to get noisy again what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently push down on it push it along that way so it bites into the wood and cuts out the channel hopefully let's see how we go Now, hopefully, with a bit of jumping around. As you can see, yes, it has jumped around quite a bit. But I've got the channel I need to work with here. And I should have enough wood left over on this to get the connections in. So that's one down. And now for the second one. Hopefully it should be a bit easier. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off there and just let it drift in, I think. fully stop before doing anything. And there we've got a neat hole. But I will need to check that I've got the right amount out of that. And now I'm going to have to take it a little bit further. There we have 
more than enough to work with there. Now finally it's going to be this one. So what I'll need to do is adjust the height ever so slightly which in this position is not so easy to do in fact I'll have to come back and do that so now I've adjusted the height so it comes above the level of the wood and this is going to be the tricky one I have to be very careful when I do this As you can see I've slipped a bit with the blade there, but I've got a channel cut out. Really for me this is a big learning experience to say the least. So there I have a good channel cut out for all the components to go in. With what is quite a thin layer top and bottom. And that one is just big enough for the battery. So, there we have it. And I didn't lose a finger this time. Right, actually, I'm going to have to clean up a bit. And we are back in the room. Now, what I've done is effectively loaded up the uh, the rear chuck, which is a a fixed chuck. And I think it's the first time we've shown you. It's the first time we've played with the lathe properly. Um, this is in a fixed scenario. Um, as you can see, I mean, this is covered in cutting oil at the moment. Um, but what I want to do is ream out a, a little bit in the in the middle of the uh, of the drip tip um, to to give it that nice sort of uh, well. Um, now the best way I thought is with with our reaming tool that we use quite a lot. Now in in this situation it's going to be fixed. What I'm going to do is just lube that up with some cutting oil uh, because apparently this is for reaming. Um, and such. Yeah, there you go. Uh, now I'm just going to try and get on there too much. About there. So effectively, what I'm going to be doing is this rotates, and you feed this tool into it. Now I want to feed it in ever so slightly, uh, just to to ream out the uh, the middle bit ever so slightly. Um, I'm just going to start the lathe. <laughs> And I'm keeping the speed really low on this. Now I'm just going to start feeding that in, and obviously it's going to go to the width of the tube. And we should start getting a cut. I'm 
look as we go. I'll take a little bit more out. looking good for me so effectively what I've done is just weld out a, a tiny bit in in the middle there um, lots of finishing to do um, a lot a lot a lot of finishing to do um, this is such a tiny thing to work on it's probably not the uh, the best thing to start with let me just release that chuck out kill the power to this and let me just release out that tip In there damn tight. Damn tight. And I've just taken the knuckle off. Just give it a little clean up. Now these will need a lot of polishing. Um, there is going to be a lot of imperfections. I've still got lots and lots and lots to do. I'm going to make it shorter effectively um, than, than where we are. But you can see I hope you can see down inside there we we've, we've got our well now and we've got our little knobbly bit on um, which is and, and that's smooth but it's going to take a lot of polishing I'm going to make it sort of stumpy so I'm going to stop it round about there um, and then what I need to do is, is shave down this bit here and, and cut a groove in for the uh, for the ring that holds it in the uh, in the tip and you can see down in there that hole doesn't go all the way it goes to round about here and a nice big dripping wheel because I want to use this on my um, on my little dripping attic but it's our, our first play um, with stainless steel this is and, and I've been I was speaking to um, to, to Graham um, uh, who, who you may well know as, as Scott for, uh, the Scott from Siam Mods um, and he was saying he's <laughs> probably a bad choice this is 316 uh, stainless steel uh, and it is incredibly hard to cut um, probably a, a better grade is probably 304 which I believe is still a medical grade um, but uh, yeah that is the the fruits of our labor today um, and not much to show there I say it's taken an absolute age just to, to play and get that little uh, ridge on the end but I am a complete and utter novice um, and part of this uh, lay thing is to, to show you a, a journey as we go um, hopefully we will have something a bit better for you next week um, I was pressed for time this week and it seemed like a good idea because I was playing uh, I will pop back to the studio um, I don't even know whether this will be well, usable um, by the time this goes out live but uh, the starts, the starts of our of our little drip tip. Um, you know, when you buy these things for a tenner and people moan, the amount of labour that goes into them, Jesus, I can tell you, incredible. Uh, back to me in the studio. And there we go. Um, actually, talking like he knows what he's doing, but doesn't have a clue. Um, and thanks to one of the comments in chat, uh, I I I've just jotted down here emery cloth which I will be trying to get on eBay um, hopefully that will work if you've got any tips for me um, on the lathe thing um, don't forget just post them over give me all you can uh, because I am a complete and a novice um, and I'm got a clue what I'm doing so any tips that come through are good um, so uh, into our second little ad break I will see you back very shortly after this Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Ten-year tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back. That was all too short. Barely time to uh, to pour a beer, um, which I can have tonight because I've got tomorrow off work. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna crack on uh, into uh, Mark's next little bit on his on his Vamo um, because if you didn't didn't notice earlier, I I made a a little error and uh, and pressed a button to start a video again when I shouldn't have done. I do have the sound of cats still ringing in my ears and uh, I will never ever do that again. So we've got everything cut out now, uh, pretty much sorted for that, apart from the odd niggle which I'm obviously going to need a bit more practice with. And at this point I really need to make a safety announcement. Uh, what you saw me doing there is probably not a safe thing to do and I would really recommend against copying anything I've just done I'm a freshly trained idiot and really shouldn't be copied but there you go, I survived so as you'll see from this these two sections line up pretty well uh, I need to trim off a little bit off this side just to match up perfectly and I made a mistake with this one I should have fed it that way around into the machine well it would have been that way around rather than that way around as this matches up perfectly that way around but when it comes to the other way and you can see the two bits don't quite line up so it's a minor detail but a bit of a pain that would have lined up and it should have been at this point that you saw me using the routing bit to route out a thicker channel here but something went wrong with the recording and I've lost the footage for that bit so Moving on, as you can see I've marked out the bits to match this up now. So that's the bits put up the right way. That's the bits I need to cut out still. That's fairly simple just to dremel them all out with the round bit. And the same on this as you can see. Because of the offset I need to cut off quite a bit from this side and knock out a tiny bit in the corner this should all be fairly straightforward now just as a quick check you can see the battery holder will fit easily straight through so there you have that now the reason I started off on the uh, center up bit is it's easier to match up the top and the bottom to this rather than start at one side and try and match everything up above it so, just to give you an idea of what I was doing before that you didn't get to see, here is the Dremel with the nice routing bit on it. And I'm just going to cut out some sections.
this unit here is rather noisy and boring, but I will get all of this out eventually. You can see I'm almost there at that corner. Just needs a bit more to work with, and then again that'll be the top section. But I don't intend to bore you with all that. As you can see it gets rather dusty. Uh, speaking of which, on watching the first two videos, Gary asked me, so where did all the dust and everything go? came out of the cuts I made from here and the simple answer is everywhere that thing really throws dust out all over the place and a hell of a lot of hoovering to do afterwards but we should get there as you'll see from this bit I am going to have to trim off a little bit in the corners to make this work that won't be fitting in that way around just need to cut off a tiny bit at the top and get it around. This bit's going to sit on there and pretty much I'm going to work in again cutting a bit off the corner. That will sit in there and I'm going to have to cut out a hole for the three switches and one for the display which should be interesting that will come later and there we go we are back in the room um yes i i did mention earlier um the uh the vapors unite calendar um totally clueless of of what that was about until about 10 seconds ago um, and I do have to thank you Pete for that um, I am now fully aware of uh, of what the calendar does actually entail so uh, you need to get yourself over to uh, the, the Facebook page Vapors Unite to, to have a look um, but I am I am most happy to be tagged in in such a photo um, I'm sure the wife will be thrilled um, before we wrap things up I'm gonna cut one of my videos short um, it was waffle um, so uh, I can just do that now. The, the two things, just very very quickly on on the on the Kickstarter campaign, we've got one mod which is currently up at the moment, um, and uh, and it is the the Stumpy mod. Um, that one is currently up on there. Now the bid for this is currently at hundred pounds. Um, very very generous. It's going to come with the eighteen six fifty extension tube and a kick. Um, so all of that included um, and on the uh, going on very very shortly is going to be our modding station um, and I know a couple of people were sort of asking questions on on what exactly that was and I say a modding station it's, it's effectively a, a, a station for building your atomizers on uh, it takes a little battery tube and your pressure button on there and you can fire up your uh, your atty to, to test it as you're making it on on the table so this will also be going up for auction on there it's a nice chunk of oak um and and i do promise that the, the people that i've said i will make one for you know who you are mr dorm um i will make you uh, a fresh brand new virgin one i am uh, i am rapidly um melting it is uh, seriously 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 warm in here tonight um, it's, it's still incredibly warm outside popped out during that video and uh, and it's it's going to be a, a lovely evening um, with all that said uh, it has been a, a pretty rush show I hope you've been, enjoyed the things that me and Mark have been doing again we are we are both on a on a journey uh, with new tools um, obviously we, we've done as much research as we can on on the the, the web and YouTube and this that and the other um, if, if you guys know you know I particularly pick up on that there's a lot of comments for people in chat who who, who are very uh, lathe worthy shall I say so if, if you've got any hints or tips please get in contact um, more more than welcome uh, you know to, to receive those um, if it's going to ease my journey uh, and make me look better in the same time I don't mind um, with all that said guys it is time to wrap it up tonight thank you very very, very much uh, to Mark uh, once again for his vids and uh, we will see you back next week. Cheers now.
sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.